This episode of I Collect is brought to you by Limited Supply, the one-stop shop for sneakers and apparel in New Brunswick, New Jersey, located right across the street from Rutgers University. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out more about this Jersey gym. What's going on world? Brand new episode of I Collect there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm here with my man, Jake. He's a very familiar face on our channel. Jake is like the ultimate sneaker collector, not just sneakers. I mean, we're gonna see all kind of crazy stuff today. I won't even talk much. I'm gonna let Jake just take it over. Jake, what do we have here today? What are you gonna show us? Well, I'm gonna show you about everything. You said you wanted to see collections. Well, I'm a collector. I don't just collect sneakers. I liked anime before it was cool. I collect the trading card games, a little bit of everything. Right, right, right. So let's kind of run down some of the collections we'll see here today. Sneakers, mm -hmm. anime, mm -hmm. Pokemon. Yep. We're gonna see some video game stuff. We got a few lunch tins that we're gonna talk about. I got some new memorabilia hanging up and uh, I think uh, that'll be plenty. All right, so some of these you've already seen from the previous videos, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about something that I, I wanted to have for the last video, but we just didn't have. My Power Ranger setup. These are all Mosh Customs. It's got that gold toe on there. I have not worn any of the Power Ranger Customs yet. I feel like this is more of an art piece. I wanna display it. I have some legacy Power Ranger collector items that I would really like to display with these. The uh, Maze Yellow, Women's Maze Yellow. It, this is the one that I really, really enjoyed. This was the hardest shoe of the whole set to get. And you got the Sabertooth Tiger on there. My favorite shoe of the whole set, we used the Flint 13s, the Blue Ranger. We got the Triceratops on the toe and on the tongue, the gold medallion that was on the chest. And the set is actually modeled after the movie, the, uh, the motion picture movie where they had like the hard armor, not the spandexy suits. The Black Ranger actually was a frog in the movie though. I wanted the Mastodon. Kimberly, my first crush, my very first crush was Kimberly, the original Pink Ranger. Amy Jo Johnson, shout it out. Now, this is the one that I feel like Mosh took the most time on. Each shoe is different. The Dragon Crest right there, and then you actually have the Green Ranger on this one right here. These are made out of the Champagne Sixes. Some people call me crazy, but they were green, they worked. So over here, we have also Tommy Oliver, the white Tiger Zord. I really like how he did the contrast between the gold and the black back tabs. It adds a lot to it, keeps them from being so plain. We actually have two different Red Rangers in the original series. We have Austin St. John and Steve Cardenia. They were both equally awesome. I don't normally wear Jordan 2s, but to me, this is the one that seemed to fit. It was a already similarly red Jordan. Now we're gonna move down to the Dank Customs. I'm actually gonna start with the ones that were made for my wife whenever she was cleared cancer free. One of the things she got was a tattoo on her knuckles. It says, stay true. So whenever I contacted Dank, I said, this is what's important to her. This is what needs to be. She is a, she is a very gothy, witchy, cultish type feel to her, you know, and she likes to wear the black clothes. So we put the moon on there. And the two colors for the typical female cancers are purple and like a bluish tealish color. So it seems to really work. These right here came out five, six, seven years ago. And whenever I got these, I knew immediately I wanted Dank to do these. I sent him my personal pair of LeBron 9 War Vets so he could match it as closely as possible. I think he did an amazing job. These haven't been talked about a whole lot. The Louis Vuitton Supreme Customs that were made out of the trench coat. Dank and Garrickson Studios collaborated. Garrickson Studios did the Jordan 1. They did a magnificent job. The Air Maxes, we used the wheat. They were perfect. It has the Supreme on the toe backwards. So I have to say this for people that don't understand. It is reversed because it was the inside of the coat. It was two separate layers, but it was reversed. So over here we had AstroTorf, BradTorf, phenomenal customizer. My job in my collecting is to try to get one from really every worthy sneaker customizer. And Brad is one of them I've been wanting to do for a while. This is the one that actually started our collaboration. This is like the South Beach one. I believe he did so many pairs of it. From my past videos, you know that I like color. Anything that pops, anything that, you know, where's Waldo, I'm gonna be found first, you know? This pair is the Warhawks. He did this for, what was it, Memorial Day in May? These are probably some of my favorite customs I have. This is the pair, he texts me and he's like, hey man, 
what's your favorite character, Star Wars character, something like that. And I said, I'm a video game nerd. So to me, I don't like the base characters. I do, but my favorite character isn't Han Solo or Boba Fett. It's always gonna be somebody that's in the extended story, the extended universe. There's a game that was made by Bioware, I believe, called Knights of the Old Republic 2. And the main bad guy in the game, his name was Darth Nihilus. I accidentally sent him an extra pair of Jordan 3s and he's like, you sent me an extra pair of 3s. I was like, well, you have them, do what you want. So he did a very similar uh, experience to this right here, the same essential setup, but he got a little interesting with the back piece, which I love. I actually bought this from another collector, the Hardwood Classic Custom from Mosh, and then the M&M 5s, which I also got, I believe, from the same collector. And Nerfs, I really think I got this from another collector as well. This is not a shoe I commissioned. Now these ones right here were done by Kikasso. I don't believe these ones were in the last video. These are modeled after the Weatherman KD4s. Now, I remember last time in our last video, you showed a lot of Nike IDs. And towards the end of that video, it was a lot of customs. Customs are Nike IDs. So most of the time for me, customs are an art piece and they're gonna be for display. I, I'm not afraid to wear certain customs. When it comes to like the paint and the type of materials, I feel like I'm more aware, for example, the Green Ranger 6s, they're on a patent leather. So I might be less likely to wear those than like the White Ranger 4s, for example. I have a stack of Nike IDs here. So what I'm gonna do is go through a couple of ones that I feel like are some of the best ones. I'm gonna step over here. This right here, Giannis OU Freak One. I actually ID the text on the tongue to say OU, and people thought I had them customized or whatever, and this is just a basic thing that you can do. This is actually a pair that I have posted before. Here is an alteration to it. Air Max One, Sail Soul, and you got your white mesh instead of the sail. Before the end of the season, they did a NBA edition of the Air Force One, which to me was phenomenal. They didn't give you a lot of options, but they were great. This is the black pair. You could do gold piping all over, just in one spot, just on the back, and it's got this back gold tab. You could customize this and this piece. Presto did these collections. They didn't keep it on there very long, but you could get these characters and they did four different characters. I haven't worn these ones, but this new Presto, React, whatever, is really comfortable. It does really well. Got some uh, KD-12s. People want to sit here and argue with me and try to say, oh, these are Supersonics. Well, I did not make them with Supersonics in mind. I made them with Oregon in mind. Here's the all green pair. This is my favorite of the three. I feel like that yellow sticks out and I get why people wanted it to be Supersonics. I do and I, would, I could totally wear it with my Supersonics jersey, but the inspiration was Oregon. I have to shout out my OKC Thunder. I got me a little React here, something a little simple, just a little blue, orange. These are some of my older KDs. I have KDs, um, LeBrons, uh, Kobe's. Those are basically the things I stuck with back in the day. This is one of my favorites. This is a Nike Elite LeBron 10. This is what I call my now and laters. I don't know if I showed these in the last video or not, but those are just disgusting, man. I love them. I went to a, a Comic-Con convention a couple years ago. I wore me a X-Men Wolverine shirt, and these are eventually gonna one day be customized into a Wolverine-themed shoe. The LeBron 11 doesn't get enough credit. It is one of my favorite of the LeBron lines. It really is. So I have this also, this NBA Air Force One OKC edition. I was able to customize the swoosh and make sure that it was game day ready. Here's my Optimus Prime themed. It's even got like the, the digital swoosh. I can't remember exactly the option name. Back before I ever got a, even a single, my first pair of Soulfly 3s. Kyrie ID was available and I made these Soulfly Kyrie ones. I call this one the Broken Hearted. It is a Valentine's Day shoe. I usually wear it around Valentine's Day. This is one of my favorite IDs I've ever done. This is my LeBron 11 Grinch. It gets a lot of attention for obvious reasons. It is very, very vibrant and it screams everything about me. My team again, Oklahoma City Thunder, but this is also a shoe that I wear to the Denver Bronco games because this is essentially the same color setup as the Denver Broncos. That's a good thing about going from Oklahoma City fan to living in Oklahoma City to uh, Denver. 
I've been a Denver fan for a long time, but I've never really owned a lot of their memorabilia and stuff like that. Now, Jake, what I've always liked about your collection, even from the first two videos, it's not all about hype for you, right? It's just about what you like, what you're collecting at the time, and I feel like this section kind of speaks to that. I have Spizikes, you don't see those very often. Some old school 13 lows that you also don't see very often. You have your Jordan Brand Classic uh, Futures. I do have the Glows. These are also a pre-sample pair. Bel Air 5s, you know, kind of typical, but we have the 28 SE, which to me was much better than the regular one that had like the sock pull up. But these ones right here are probably my favorite. These are the Westbrook ones. I haven't worn these. I actually have the hat up here with them. That way, if I want to rock them both. These ones right here, women's Jordan 3, uh, these are a 10 and a half. They're super snug, but I was willing to go for it. We have the Mr. Cartoon Air Force Ones. These are limited to, a, I believe, like 400. Really hard to, to find in a good condition or even a legit pair. Now, some of my favorite kicks this year, I mean, you have the undefeated Kobe 4s. Kobe, my favorite shoes. They are what they are. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about them. But one of my favorite shoes this year to come out it is a Jordan Proto Max 720. This is my favorite pair of the three. My favorite shoe of the year, though, is the DIM6, the DMSX. This shoe is by far the most comfortable Nike shoe that is on the market. It rivals the Boost, the Adidas Boost in every way. And then, of course, you have Supreme Foam Posits. All right, Jay, you're not the only collector in this house. Your wife, I hear, and I've seen off camera, is like just as big of a collector as you, if not bigger. Maybe not on the sneaker uh, aspect of it, but she collects, you know, the trading cards. She collects stones, semi-precious stones. She also has her own sneaker collection. We have this special edition shoe surgeon, one of 10, I believe. It's called the North Pole. It is covered in a heavy glitter. It's, an, it's got like a nice thick glitter. And the good thing about this shoe specifically, one of the things that draw it to me for her to get it for her is she used to be a huge collector in nail polish every you know week or so she'd have a different kind of nail polish so to me this has more than one connection to it she's a very festive very holiday oriented person but she also likes the glitter so i i kind of connected the dots there on that one so inside my sneaker room i have a closet that i didn't show off last time what you're going to see here in its entirety is my wife's collection. She has over 20 pairs of 270s. She has boosts that some people wish they had and I was able to get for retail. She has lots of specific special types of shoes. So she has the Nice Kicks. She has the Complex Con NERD. But some of the ones that she has that you don't see a lot, her favorite pair, for example, is the gold pair. This pair I had to buy three times. So two times I bought it, um, they were fake and they were sent back between the middleman services, rather be StockX or whatever. And then I finally got me a legit pair. She also loves the Jordan 1 satin collection. I had to talk her into that one, but whenever I finally got her a pair, she absolutely loved them. We have the Barely Grape, and then we have uh, the, the lavender or whatever, but the, the, the satin backboards are the ones that really broke the camel's back that got me into getting her Jordan 1s. She is absolutely 100% a Halloween person. Halloween starts September 1st here, so these shoes were a must. I was able to get her a pair of the Freddy Dunks. She is a uh, horror person. That's one of the things that kind of brought us together in our relationship. We enjoy lots of horror movies, gore, Halloween, whatever you want to call it. This is us. So down here we have 270s. There's quite a lot of them. We have a few of the women's exclusives. This one is one of the 270s that I am the most envious of. I love the colors. She's got the pandas. I was able to get her a pair of the pandas for retail. I got her the purple lobsters also for retail. But we have a few pairs of these reacts and these are a release pair, but these right here Nike ID, I really like these. Your Nike ID Prestos, she really likes Prestos. So her Instagram name is Sindel the Witch. So what I did was, is I put Sindel the Witch. I got her what I like to call Uncle Greg 
Sunday suit Air Force Ones. They've got this great suede on them. And to me, this just seems like something Uncle Greg would wear to church on Sunday. Let's talk about the tee and, and the shoes that you wear. This is uh, the homage to Oklahoma. Thank you, Oklahoma. Zero regrets. Uh, I think Westbrook, he really showed our city a lot of love. He showed our state a lot of love. You know, people want to say Westbrook's cold and callous, but that's who Westbrook is. You know, that's his behavior. But Russell did nothing but show love for the city. Didn't work out. He moved to the Rockets. Well, now I'm an OKC fan, but I'm also a Rockets fan. Um, I support Russell 100%. Um, I think he made the right decision. I think OKC is in a, um, obviously in a rebuild mode and he needs to go where he's gonna win a ring. He doesn't need to be in a rebuild situation. But uh, I have on my soul, uh, shoe surgeon Westbrook 3s. They're slightly modeled after a pair that he wore before he got his own model, which is one of my favorite unreleased samples out there. All right, Jay, we're in here for part one and part two, yep. right? We spent like the entire video in here for the most <laughs> part. But since then, you have added new shoes, tons of them but I'm gonna hold you to 10. 10 shoes that were not in here the last time we shot together. Um, I'll start with the Blake Griffin All-Star Kicks that came out a few years ago. This is the more common pair. This is not the pair that has like the alternate trim and stuff on it. This pair right here. So there are not very many pairs of these right here. I, I can't tell you exactly how many there are. Um, I've had these a while. I've worn them a couple of times. Once again, not very comfortable but I still love the colors. Another shoe I did not have last time you were here were the Fab Fives. I don't do a lot of fives, as I said earlier, but this pair with it being the suede and, and me having the Oregon green and the black pair, I knew that, you know, just hearing from the, the peeps and stuff that this is a pair to have. Another pair I have in here, which is my team, the OU4s. I almost didn't get these, but I will say that I love them. They fit better than almost any four that I have. A pair that I didn't have last time, the Duck Sixes. I don't know if you can see the, the 3M in there, kind of working it. But um, I wore these to SneakerCon in Denver. These are actually pretty comfortable. I love them. You kind of definitely watch where you're walking because that suede on there is nice and butter. You're halfway done, no pressure. That's five. So we have the Kobe Nike Big or Big Nike, whichever way you want to pr pronounce it, the MVP. I know there's only like 12, 24 pairs, something like this. I've only seen one other pair ever. I will probably never wear this pair, but that's beside the point. Kobe being who Kobe is. I mean, he is the current retired Michael Jordan. I didn't have the Kwai 54.3 friends and family last time you were here. Um, these are butter in every sense of the word. The stamped like mud guard, side guard here thing, the suede, they are very similar to the release pair and that's what's great. So another shoe I didn't have on the lineup last time we were here was the Ray Allen 13s. I may have mentioned them in the video, but they weren't on the new shelf here. What was this, number eight? This pair right here, I love this pair. I don't like twos, like pretty much I just don't like twos, but the softness and the way that the pair feels on your feet, it's just very, very quality. They went above and beyond with these. I have the beach ones as well. So I'm gonna do these last two at once because the last video, I didn't know where these were. Galaxy Foam Posit and Galaxy Rookies. I wasn't able to get like the Soul Collector ones with the Glow Pods or whatever they are, but these will work. I've worn them a couple of times. They're all right, they're comfortable. But for the most part, this is because that whole all-star collection, every shoe really is worth collecting. The Galaxy Foam Posit is, is what it is. It is, it was an instant classic. It went straight to the top. You know, people were instantly paying $1,500 for the shoe at the very minimum for a used pair. You really can't find them in good condition anymore. I do have a few scuffs on mine, you know, but um, that's okay. You know, that comes with the territory of sneakers. So one of my new, favorite kicks and one of my favorite kicks of the year, if not my favorite, is the new Westbrook 0.2. I have almost every pair. I have a few more coming, uh, but I will eventually get them. Essentially, my favorite pairs are the BHM, this first pair here, I can't remember what they call them, and the All-Star. But I was lucky enough to get the update on the sneakers app, and I was able to get 
the one of 500, essentially sample mashup of Russell's Only Chaos, which about six pairs of those I wish they came out with. This is what good basketball shoe looks like. It is also the top selling shoe of 2019. So last time you guys were here, I kind of told you about my Westbrook memorabilia and the different Thunder stuff that I have. The one thing that we did not talk about was my jersey collection. This isn't even all of them. I have, you know, 10 or so that are missing. A couple of years ago, about five, six, seven years ago, I had a gentleman by the name of Eric Emanuel. You may know him. He has a Reebok collection right now. And he does customized jerseys and stuff like that. And I, I asked him if he would make a jersey for myself and my father-in-law for his successful cancer um, treatment. He happened to make me and him both a Westbrook and a Kevin Durant one, which I will always, always have these. Now I have, you know, your Christmas ones, you know, our alternatives, finals jersey from whenever we went to finals. You know, I have some gift ones, but some of my favorite ones are like the orange ones, the ones I like to wear on Sundays. Seattle Supersonics. That'll turn heads in the Oklahoma City Thunder Arena. So this is a funny story. One time we were playing the Spurs. I think it was 2012, 2013 during the, one of the finals rounds. And we smashed them. We smashed them, absolutely. So I show up when the Spurs are in the arena with their, their colors on and everybody's looking at me like, you know, confused because they, you know, they can't put the, you know, I don't know. And I have a hat that matches it really well. And everybody that asked, I said, we own these colors too. So I have to represent my other sports team, the legend, the great, the one and only John Elway. I wasn't able to get the eight, but I was able to get this one. Next to the uh, Prince um, homage ones for Minnesota, these are probably one of the coolest jerseys in existence ever in the NBA. The Prince ones are probably my favorite. Adrian Peterson, NFL legend already, Hall of Famer easily. He played for OU. I was at his first game. I, was, I watched his first touchdown. I was in the end zone of his first touchdown. It was great. It's like one of those things that I always thought was really cool. So I had to have this all-star jersey signed. So to take a little break from the sneakers and the sports and, and the whatnot, I have the other side of me, the side that a lot of people don't know, which is the video games, the anime, the nerd stuff, the stuff that people used to think was lame, but now it's cool. Well, I was doing that way before it, most people were. So I have my curio cabinet here that is loaded with some of my favorite, favorite pop culture references, characters, whatever you want to call it. I have four Michael Jackson characters. I have the bad, the beat it, the thriller, and Michael Jackson where he first did the moonwalk. I have Batman, I have the Joker, and I also have Evil Dead Ash. This guy right here is Ginkgo. He is from an anime that is a little um, free spirit, a little hippie-ish. Star Wars, we have some of the most elusive characters in Star Wars. We have Darth Maul, uh, we have Asajj Ventress. She is also a Sith character. She is super badass and she's bald, so that's dope. We have right here the same, she is the same of the same order as Darth Maul. She's got the same tattoos as Darth Maul. Uh, she's completely covered, but she is, uh, I believe her actual species is called a, like a Twi'lek or a Twi'lek. We have some of my favorite uh, video game characters right here from Metal Gear Solid series. I have played the games over and over and over again. They are part of who I am. They are a part of the reason why I love video games. Single player campaigns specifically, I believe there's 500 of those. The Solid Snake, I think there's like a thousand of those. This character is one of my newest. This is the Cyborg Ninja Gray Fox. Down here we have the pop culture kingdom, really. We have Superman, we have Neo fighting Chun-Li, which, I mean, let's just be real, Chun-Li would kick Neo's ass. And then we have Tony Stark, Iron Man, battle damaged from the original Iron Man movie. He actually lights up, his hand will light up and his eyes will light up. Over here, I have an Akira, which is an anime from 1988 is as old as I am. It is, it, it is as good as any classic movie you can find when it comes to anime. It stands the test of time. It is a classic. Now my bottom shelf, which involves more Akira down here, it has Tetsuo, Tetsuo's bike, Kaneda, who is the guy who actually controls Tetsuo's bike. I have a character here, right here, that is very obscure. It's a 45 minute anime that uh, most people, even anime fans, 
have not seen. It's called Bao. Bleach, everybody knows Bleach. Bleach is like Naruto. That's Hitsugaya. Uh, you can't see him, but behind there is one of my favorite animes of all time, Karas, which is, um, it has the same principle as like Power Rangers, except there's only one. He's like the protector of his city. Now we have my shelf that is just kind of loaded with stuff. There's not all the stuff on here that I want right now, but we can start up here. I have the Master Chief Halo 3 limited edition helmet. I have a one of so many hundred Master Chief hand holding the chip that, that displays Cortana whenever he pulls it off the back of his helmet. We also have up here the Hot Toys Resident Evil. I have a lot of the characters from four, five, and six. Right here, I have Predator. We have two of my favorite characters, Metal Gear Solid. They're all a part of the same series from multiple different games. Hideo Kojima builds a story that is layered like, like a croissant or, 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 or like buttery biscuits. There's like hundreds of layers. One of my favorite animes is Naruto. Naruto is the new Dragon Ball Z. It is by far the most popular animated cartoon on the planet right now. We have Alpha 5 from Power Rangers, Freddy, Iron Man, but we also have whatever the hell the robot is called from The Matrix. Some Funko Pops. I have lots more Funko Pop, but I don't have the place to displace them. We have Aliens. Aliens is one of my wife's favorite series. As you can tell, we have all kinds of stuff. We have the alien, the giant alien egg back there. We have the alien queen coming through the doors. You know, come on. So we're gonna have little stuff. So right here is a larger scale replica of the virus that is in Resident Evil movies. These are the, the virus and the antivirus right here. These were limited to like 250 or 400 or something like that. I do have some video game stuff down here. Like right here, one of my favorite video games right now is called Days Gone. Um, it's essentially, if you were to make a game about Daryl Dixon that was successful because the Walking Dead games have never been good. You got a motorcycle, you got crossbows, you got all kinds of things. Up here is strictly my wife's collection of lunch boxes. You have lunch boxes that range from, you know, two, three, five years old, all the way to 20, 25, 30 years old or, or more. Over here though, we have Alvin and the Chipmunks, we have a Peanuts, and we have a teeny tiny Curious George one. So on this table here, this is a light, light, light representation of what I collect because if I were to put everything that I collected of this matter on the table, we would need four tables. These are some of the newer collections. I collect Pokemon, I collect Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, whatever kind of collectible card game you can think of, you can guarantee that I probably have it. These right here are Magic the Gathering deck boxes. They hold hundreds of cards. So the thing about Magic the Gathering is, is a lot of the cards you'll see and they have like what you call like a holographic or holofoil card, which is the one that has the shiny in it. And most packs guarantee a holofoil card. Magic the Gathering, does not and will not care what you think about holographic cards, you can open up 20 packs and not get a single one. That means that the holographic cards are very much more collectible and rare. Right here we have a magazine, one of about 30 or 40 that we have. This is a uh, Shonen Jump. Shonen Jump is the magazine, it's like a, a manga magazine that has anime characters and different manga in it. And Shonen Jump is where Naruto premiered right here. This is actually a very good series. Kakashi um, is one of my favorite characters, if not, you know, top three characters. This is a story back when he was a kid. These very highly collectible game mats that I got from a friend that um, he normally sells Bape, Bape Kingpin. He normally sells Bape stuff, but he also does this kind of stuff, which I really enjoy. Some of them are also tournament mats that they use whenever they go and play the cards and they they win. So some of these will only be limited to just a few. The cards to Naruto, there is a lot of sets. And by all means, there are hundreds of different versions of each character. We have upwards of two, three hundred thousand cards. We would order 20, 30 boxes of each set. Each set comes with 24 or 30 booster packs. Each booster pack comes with 9 to 12 cards in it. You do the math, it adds up really quick. You have Naruto, you have Yu-Gi-Oh, you have different series. This is a part of my wife's collection. These are garbage pail cards. 
So these cards range from 15 years old to 30 plus years old. But let's flip back about 20 pages and you can see the color of the whites of the corners and the edges turn change. And then all of a sudden, 1986, you know, and then right here you have Dog Bites Boyd. Well, that to me kind of reminds me of like Beetlejuice where he pulls his face out. They have one over here that looked like E.T. that we've seen earlier. They definitely do pop culture references. If you're old enough to remember this stuff, then you will kind of get that feeling. We have Duel Masters, which is not a popular game, but you know, we collect everything, as you can tell. We actually have card sets that are extremely rare. Some where there's only two, three, four whole sets of these cards. And that's um, one of the ones that nowadays, these things can go upwards of $30,000. Right here I have a cosplay uh, helmet, which is one of the main bad guys from the Naruto series. We have Shin-Chan. Now my doll is dirty, my plushie's dirty. He's got a little dirty spots, but I'll clean him up. He has some features to him, which I won't, I won't show on camera, but he has a penis underneath his shorts. Um, to, for the sake of censorship and, and whatnot, I'm not gonna show you. They call him Mr. Elephant. It is one of the greatest cartoons, animes of all time. It is for adults only, and it is pure, pure comedy. So we have Pokemon. Pokemon is the holy grail of Clark collectibles, merchandise. They have sold billions and billions of dollars in their 20 years of existence. You have extremely highly collectible items that come with it. And one of them is, is this Team Rocket set. There are only so many of them made are available. This is the only one I've ever seen for sale. And actually I didn't even know that it existed until the person approached me to buy it. It is a hard case. It's got the Team Rocket logo on the front. It has a special coin in it. And the cards are in Japanese. There are 900 something Pokemon in the Pokemon universe. So that means there are thousands, tens of thousands of different versions of cards between the different languages and stuff like that. But one of the coolest things I ever thought about the Pokemon, they did a series where they let children draw the art for the Pokemon and they put them on carts and it was really cool. This is a card that was done by a child. They do these art cards that are completely sponsored and done by different children organizations and really there isn't nothing cool. One of the things that they do are like starter decks or tins that have like so many cards or booster packs in it to kind of help you get started on your trading card experience. This is a tiny, tiny representation. I have, you know, upward of a hundred something tins between the Yu-Gi-Oh and whatnot. Now Naruto tins, right here I have four of the same tin, but this tin's very rare. This is Kimimaro. He protrudes bones from his body. It's pretty sick, like in a cool way. Over here we have a shelf that has a lot of different kind of stuff. You have your, your Resident Evil liquor, your 3D set. You got your alien, your human hybrid. You have also the Final Fantasy Cloud and Sephiroth. But down here we have Doom. This Doom game that came out in 2016 definitely stepped things up, created a whole new experience for the video game competitive market. We have like the Moogle from Final Fantasy. We have another character from Final Fantasy One. Down here, we have Edward and Alphonse Elric. They are in a anime where they uh, deal with like a cultish type spells type stuff. We have Dante. If you've ever played Devil May Cry, you know Dante. In Devil May Cry 4, you have Nero. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember this movie, but this movie right here was my nightmares for about three years whenever I was young. This specific character, it's kind of masochistic for me to have him, but this is the character that tortured me for so long. And right here we have a dead predator decapitated skull from Jack of the Dust. He creates skulls and decapitated heads of different pop culture characters constantly. And this one has the blood. This is actually the limited edition one with the separate blood. Jake, craziest collection ever. I mean collections, right? I'm speechless. I'm sure a lot of people will be from the sneakers to the anime, cards, everything, man. You do it. 
you do it, right? And it's just a passion of yours. I have so many different interests and likes, and you know, who's to say that you only can collect sneakers, you can only collect this, you can only collect that. I feel like if it makes you happy, and if you are not grinding yourself in the ground broke, why not, you know I mean? You only live this earth so long, so. Yeah, definitely, and I'm sure there's a lot of collectors out there that are watching this, and I know you have something special for a fellow collector out there, and what is that? So what I have here is I have not one, but I have two look-see design petite boxes that will hold your sneakers and display them just like I have back here and I have in the room that we are going to give away. And to find out how to win those, follow Koiski Media and from there we'll tell you how to win everything that Jake has to offer. Until next time, there is a next time, right? Yeah, there's a next time. Your host, George Kill. My brother did the whole space, him and one other guy. Initially, I wanted it to be white box because I wanted people to focus on just the shoes and the product. The wood behind, the grass, that was his idea. What is the significance of the name, Limited Supply? And then what is your background with, with sneakers? So Limited Supply actually started in 2013. We okay. were selling shoes at SneakerCon, other sneaker events, mm -hmm. online. I was into sneakers since I was a little kid. I, you know, the usual story. Couldn't afford them back then. Yeah. Had my first job, right. went crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs>